adding the host Macintosh to a GNS3 topology using a logical TAP0 interface. There are many different ways to integrate your live Mac, which is the host computer for GNS3, into the topology that it's supporting. There's, however, a couple of ways that really work well. I'm here to show you one of those. Let's begin. Let's say that you and I are running GNS3 slash Dynamips on a Macintosh. It doesn't have to be this one. It doesn't have to be an iMac or a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air, just some type of Macintosh with OS X. And we want to go ahead and add this host as a device in our GNS3 topology. So it's the host of GNS3 and we want to add it into the mix. How do we do that? Now the challenge is there's several different ways of doing that. And depending on the type of hardware platform you're on, for example, MacBook Air doesn't have a physical ethernet adapter, it uses wireless only. The MacBook Pros have both. But what is a consistent method that you and I can use to successfully get this Mac in our topology? That's what this nugget's all about. We need one little file. It's so simple. We're going to download TunTap from the internet. So TunTap is a, we're going to run it once on this Macintosh, and that allows us to create some logical interfaces. I'm going to focus on just one for a moment, called Tap0, and then there's Tap1, and Tap2, and Tap3. There's also some tunnel interfaces, hence the name TunTap. The Tap interfaces are a type of bridged interface. So this application simply gives us the opportunity to create these logical interfaces like Tap0. Secondly, in GNS, we're going to create a cloud. And that cloud in GNS is going to represent, guess what, that logical interface. And the magic, the magic behind the scenes is that once we create the cloud and connect it to GNS3, if that cloud represents this interface, at that moment, Dynamips behind the scenes with GNS creates that logical interface for us. So once that interface is up, we then just simply have to configure an IP address that we want this Macintosh to use on that interface. And if that's tied to the rest of our network, like maybe that's router one, we now have our Macintosh logically connected to our router. That's how simple it is. Now there's one major, major thing that you absolutely deserve to know, and that is right here. To make this work, you must run GNS3 as root. And why is that? It's because when we are in GNS3 slash Dynamips on the back end, and we set up this TAP0 interface, and we connect it to GNS3, it's at that moment that Dynamips, which also needs to be running as root, will spawn off this TAP0 interface. If we don't run it as root, we'll get a failure saying, I can't generate this interface, and it's game over. So let's take a moment right now and walk through these exact steps, build a brand new topology, and put our Macintosh right in it. The very first thing we'd want to do is download TunTap for the Mac. And I just did a Google search for TunTap, and it was our first hit. I downloaded it, and I ran it. Once that's done, the next step is to run GNS3, and this is the critical step. We need to run it as root. Our next step is to launch GNS3 as root, which is going to cause Dynamips also to launch as root. Just to verify that that is being done correctly, you can go to the activity monitor and say, I want to see all processes. And then when they launch off, you can see exactly who the owner is of that process. So here's a, a shortcut I wrote. It's a little one-liner that says, sudo, I want to run under applications, gns3.app, contents, macOS, gns3. That's where I happen to have my GNS3 installed on my file system. Your mileage may vary if you put the GNS3 package in a different location, but I put mine in applications, which makes this path correct. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that, and I'm simply going to launch it from a new shell. So I'll paste that in, and that should launch it. It's going to ask for my password, which I will put in, if I can remember it. There we go. So it launches, and in the background, just take a look, and we can see that GNS3 itself is running as root, and that's also going to turn into Dynamips also being kicked off as root once we turn up the hardware emulation. So let's go ahead and create a new project, and let's just drag off one router. I've already got this configured with an iOS image. So there's router one. He's beautiful, isn't he? And we'll bring in a switch. I like to use switches, not because they're required in GNS3. I use these little GNS3 switches because it allows me to hot connect if devices are already running. Otherwise, if I have devices running and they're connected directly together, it gives me grief sometimes about changing the connections. So I put that for a good measure. And let's bring in a cloud. That cloud is going to represent this TAP0 interface. So we're going to double click on the cloud. The topology is not running. Go to cloud one. <laughs> I guess we could go create a cloud nine if you want to. That's great. And we're going to go to NIO TAP right here. And we're going to specify slash dev slash TAP. And we can use a number of our choice. If it's your first TAP interface, Go ahead and use tap zero and click on add, and that's creating that or that's 
going to create this logical interface and bring it active. So we'll click on OK, and I want to show you another little magic trick right here. This is important. I'm going to wrap another terminal window. I'm going to do a IF config. Here's all the interfaces I currently have on this Macintosh. I've got a loopback, and I've got EN0, which is my wireless. I've got a couple of virtual box local host only type interfaces, but no tap zero interface. But once I connect this then and bring up the topology, then the interface comes up. So I'll leave this window open here so we can see it. In fact, let me go ahead and close this and that, and we'll get a little more real estate so we can see this all together. So let's build our connections. To do that, we're gonna go up to the connector tool, and we're gonna say, I want fast ethernet connections, that'll do. There's our logical interface for the tap zero. It's gonna connect to the switch and the switch to the router, and that router is going to go ahead and use FA00. We can see that with the label option here. So there's the tap zero, and this router is too close to see. There we go. So here, my hands will never leave my arms. We do IF config again. Check this out. Now we have tap zero. It just showed up. So if we want to assign an IP address, we can. Now, if we're going to use the 10 network here, I might want to use a 10 address here as well. To do that, we do sudo IF config. I want to configure TAP0 interface, the one we just popped up based on GNS3 bringing that up for us. And let's use the address of 10.0.0. How about 55 with a 24-bit mask? And we'll say up just for good measure. And it is going. Now, I've also, normally it would ask me for my password if you hadn't authenticated recently from a terminal window. But I had, so that's why sudo isn't asking me for my user credentials. So now that that's done, let's configure the rest of our topology. In fact, let's bring up our topology. And we'll do that by simply clicking on the Go button. And we're going to bring up a console window to R1. While that's cooking there for a moment, let's go over back to our processes. And you'll notice that Dynamips is actually owned by root right there. So it's it GNS3 we launched as root. It spawned off Dynamips as root. And that's the behind the scenes why that dynamic interface was be able to be brought up. So let's go bring up a console to R1. And this will be fine right here and press enter to get the prompt, which we will. Config T interface FA 0 slash 0. Let me bring that up so we can see it a little better. So er, crank him up there. And we'll say no shutdown. And then we'll do an IP address of 10.0.0.1. And we should be able to have connectivity now between the Macintosh, the host machine, and this device. In fact, let's do a little debug of IP ICMP. And we'll ping him. It's just a good way to make sure we're talking about the right thing here. So sure enough, there's the pings happening over here. Here's the debug of ICMP packets behind the scenes happening on the router, just to verify we are indeed talking to the right device. And then if we do an ARP-A here on the Mac, it's resolved 10.0.0.1 to that MAC address. And on the router, we can go ahead and say show ARP. And we can verify that the MAC addresses match. And that's no pun intended with the MAC address on R1, talking about the layer two address, just verifying that we are talking to the indeed the right device. In this nugget, our objectives are pretty simple. Number one, how do we get this device, the Macintosh host machine, integrated in GNS3 and get it to work consistently? And one of the best answers is to use a TunTap interface, represent it in a cloud inside GNS3, configure an IP address on that tap interface on the Mac if you want to use it. And then make sure you run GNS3 as root so it all works. I've had a great time. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.